Hello, women of welcome. I am Sarah Casada, and I now have a strong desire for this live to start with like basketball music, like let's get ready to rumble. I used to start these with music, but I've, I've stopped doing that. But I, we're not gonna rumble today. I'm excited to tell you that we are doing an interview with Shannon Martin. And I am gonna wait until she joins. I see her being a part here. Oh, here we go. Uh-oh, this is where the technology go live with Shannon. Fingers crossed. Did we do it? Do, do, do. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Success on are. the very first try. That Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, so those of you that are watching, if you are not familiar with Shannon Martin, I'm excited to introduce you to her, her to you both ways, I guess. Um, she is a writer and a speaker and has just released her third book, Start With Hello and Other Simple Ways to Live as Neighbors, which is going to be part of our conversation today. Um, Shannon has also traveled with Women of Welcome to the border in the past, and so she's familiar a little bit with our community. If you are joining <laughs> today and you're not familiar with our community, Women of Welcome, we're an online community of Christian women, and our hope and desire is to dive into the whole of scripture to understand and know God's heart for immigrants and refugees. And so um, this book is such a great tie-in to that because... <laughs> While a lot of our work happens online, we also offer, this year we've been doing these monthly invitations. And this month, our invitation has been, take that first step in your community, whatever that looks like. And so it's a perfect time to talk with Shannon about her new book. So welcome, Shannon. That was a really long intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so, I'm always happy to be here with you. And I love, I, I just love this community. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled. That's awesome. I think what struck me, the title of this book is so, it just immediately hits you. And I think given where we are at a community doing these kind of monthly invitations of simple things like go to an immigrant owned restaurant and leave a larger mm -hmm. average tip right? Or mm -hmm. go to an immigrant market and buy something and support local business owners, these kinds of things. I'm curious, what led you to kind of recognize the need for mm -hmm. this type of primer on neighborhood relationships yeah. to the point where we're well, starting hello? Yeah, I mean, it, it's honestly the book I would have loved to have found when I, mm -hmm. when I started to understand that there was like actual value in, in, building meaningful connections with the people around us. So, you know, for me, it, I came to that understanding when I, when I moved into a very immigrant rich neighborhood, that's part of my experience where I live in my community. Um, and so, but I had grown up up to that point, existing almost exclusively in more rural contexts and in places where the community I was in in almost every way reminded me of myself. Like there wasn't a lot of difference in my day-to-day -day life. And so when I landed here, it was like, okay, I, I know this matters. I know it's important. Um, it's all very new to me and I just don't know how to do it. Like, how do I do the work of, of living as a neighbor? You know, why, why does it matter? Why does it make my life better? But most specifically, what do I do? So I set out to write that book answering that question because I knew it was a question I got from a lot of people who might have read my earlier books like, okay, we get it. We get that it's important, but how do I do it? Um, and so I wanted to make it the most practical, digestible, accessible, like I don't think of it as like a how-to book because that's just not how this works, but I wanted it to be sort of a, a field guide of, of like little tiny steps we, we think sometimes that living as a neighbor, you know, we think of Mr. Rogers and all these ideas <laughs> we might have, and it feels too big when what it really looks like for me is like, I'm just living my life in this house, in this neighborhood, and I am open to connections as they happen. I'm just, I'm awake to it. I am paying attention and I'm, I'm learning. I'm taking up my own education but also just most of the actual interactions just kind of, they, they come along 
and we want to be we want to be available when those things happen open to connections when they happen that just like yeah strikes my little planner heart <laughs> so deeply <laughs> i'm like i know but i have a very detailed hourly schedule of the day um <laughs> but it's i mean that's something i'm always learning in parenting and i think it's also really yeah. any type if we want to have relationships they're not always as neat and tidy as maybe yeah. <laughs> as maybe we'd prefer um no. And it's you true. actually talk in, in the beginning of your book about some of the barriers that um, mm -hmm. many in our community could relate to. You talked about, I won't dive into all of these because yeah, sure. can read the book, and it, but you talk about being an <laughs> introvert, hating small yeah. talk, time, capacity. But I want to dive into one that's specifically related that we talk about in this community, which yeah. is language barriers when we talk yeah. about reaching out to neighbors and we just asked this actually yesterday on our Instagram page, like, what does it feel like when you're in a place where you don't understand the language and what experiences yeah. have you? I accidentally ordered drugs on the street. That was an unfortunate <laughs> Sarah. barrier situation. I just wanted coconut, Shannon, but I ordered cocaine and it was very awkward for everyone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh, that's so good. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how we build community. Yeah. language barriers are a real thing. Yeah, it is. So when we moved into this neighborhood, the, the neighbors directly next door to us, they're a Spanish speaking family. And, and we've lived here now for about 11 years. So this is 11 years ago. They had tiny babies who are now in middle school. We had like little preschoolers who are now in high school, like nothing, you know, time does its work. <laughs> but I knew I had taken uh, Spanish in high school a thousand years ago. Like I knew random nouns is basically all I knew <laughs> How does and it, tell? <laughs> yeah like apple yeah. I remember the word for fork like these very unhelpful words but um one thing that happened was our kids just got to work they didn't let it stop them they just started playing together in the in the backyard and the one of the one of my favorite things about my neighborhood is that we don't have fences so our houses are really close together. And it's like when we moved here from, you know, living on six acres to moving here, I was like, how, how will we ever survive on this little, <laughs> but what I learned very quickly is we actually have a massive yard that stretches half the block because the kids just started running back and forth and they would be at our place and they would be, you know, they, they just didn't let it stop them. And that that was something I noticed right away. And it was like that, like, oh, of course the kids will lead us well in this. Um, but, you know, now we're 11 years in with these neighbors. They're still here. Thank God. Um, and we just keep kind of showing up for each other in the midst of our own awkwardness and maybe our own discomfort. Um, we, we just keep doing the best we can. We keep sharing food, passing plates of food back and forth. Um, that transcends language. And, and, and beyond that, one of the things I've learned is, you know, as I've watched my, the, the mom of the family, as I've watched her really put herself out there and, and work hard to communicate with me in English, mm -hmm. it, it has been a lesson to me that sometimes I need to put myself out there and do my best and, and look stupid and try to communicate to her in Spanish. And whenever I do that, it's very funny to them, you know, it's, it gets a laugh and, and that's okay. That's, that's a good, good thing. But, but I, I've recognized over time, like she can't be the, the only one doing that hard work. I need to at least show my, my willingness. Now, some of us just don't know the language. Like my husband doesn't know any Spanish at all. Um, and so his experience is a little different, but I think finding ways to, to be the one who shows up uncertain, or be, you know, be the one who shows up kind of needy, or just any time we can put ourselves in a posture of kind of humility, I think that that reaps dividends. I think that's so wise and so true and often so overlooked that mm -hmm. the, and I remember my husband actually said this to me one time of like, sometimes the most hospitable thing you can do is go to someone else's house. That's it they're comfortable, like yeah. it's their food, it's their mm -hmm. policy, it's their mm -hmm. space. Yeah. And I'm the more uncomfortable. So that can actually be a practice of hospitality. And that That's is so good. 
<laughs> yeah. It's not how yeah. I think about it. I, if I'm going right. to be hosting you, I'm going to take care of you. And it, yeah. goes, it goes both ways. Well, and I would add to that. Now that you say that, and I think you and I have talked about this before, but it's such a good point. We have been in their home far more times than they have been in our home. And mm -hmm. we've made invitations for them now and then to come over. And that, it, like you said, like that's, that's not their level of comfort and, and that's okay. So we, we spend every 4th of July together in our backyards. We have, you know, cookouts on their back patio a lot, but they also invite us to all of their kids' birthday parties. And we like stop the world when, when it's time for one of those parties, because I have learned through you and just through life, that is a way of, of showing hospitality by coming into their space and being the only person in the house who is not really a Spanish speaker. Um, that, that is a way that we can meet people where they are. So true. So true. And I think kind of to your point about awkwardness and uncomfortability, I think that's something we just have to own as par for the course. Like we do. Something we value. We're going to feel awkward. Yeah. At times. We're There's going to no feel drugs. You never know. <laughs> You just never know. That's, I mean, I wish I had better news for us. I wish, I wish I wrote a chapter on how to promise that you're never going to feel awkward. I don't have the answer to that. I need somebody else to write that book for me. I'm always awkward. And sometimes people who know me well are like, we believe you, Shannon. They're like, Sarah, you know, you know how awkward I can be. I think but you it, exaggerate it, but I know where you're coming from. We but all we all, don't we all feel it? That's the thing. Like in my, in my actual neighborhood, I promise you, I am not, I, I don't feel particularly gifted at this work. I am, I am aware of the importance of it. I am aware that it's going to require intention of me. It does not come naturally to me. I am introverted. Um, I do. I, I'm a pretty, you know, I can be a pretty quiet person. Um, and and it, it, it takes some work for me to put myself out there. But what I've learned over time, over a lot of years now under my belt, is that anytime I put myself out there, I just, it's, it's always worth it. It doesn't mean that the, the outcome is always like a particular, you know, we don't get to control the outcome. But, but when I can put myself outside of my comfort zone, it builds connection in even the tiniest ways. And that gives us something to build on as we go forward. And it gets me a little more comfortable over time. I don't think I'm ever going to be wired that way. I am who I am, but I also know what I know. Mm -hmm. I know that when I, that when I take that risk, it's just, you know, those are the nights you like, you just go to bed and you feel like, you know, th this was worth it to, to live in a place because we are all living wherever we're living. And this book this book works wherever, whatever type of context you're in, but, but we're spending our lives in these particular places. Wouldn't it be better if we really felt like we belonged in these places where we live? Like if we really came to a place of, of understanding, like we know the people around us on some level and they know us, wouldn't it be better to spend our lives in our places from that perspective? I know, I know it's better. Hmm. Yeah, that's such a beautiful vision. And I think that the reality is we all want that. We want that connection. We want that belonging. Yeah. If you've yes. been on the receiving end of it, it doesn't always feel as awkward for the person. Like we just moved to a right. new neighborhood after mm -hmm. 13 years of living where we lived. We moved three miles to the right <laughs> and it was like <laughs> a whole new world in, so in some ways yeah. and also exactly the same. And Somebody knew somebody on our street introduced us via text. And next thing I know, she's like, hey, um, we always do a block party on Labor Day. So and we have a pool. So come on over. I'm like, oh, I would love to meet all my neighbors in a swimsuit. This is definitely the direction <laughs> that I was going with this. Um, but it was like, of course, I'm going to come because I don't know yeah. anyone. And I just love yeah. that you haven't even met me yet yourself, but are like, hey, come over and, you know, yeah bring something if you want or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, it's so good. Yeah, it felt, it was like, okay, we're going to be okay. You know, it's like, you almost yeah. are like, this isn't going to be the end of the world because someone said hello, right? It's, That's it. Not that over, like, we don't have to overcomplicate it. And I think no, you we do don't. such a good job in your book. Um, 
encouraging us to let go of some of those things that hold us. <laughs> hold yeah, us. I um, hope so. Absolutely. Um, there's a chapter in your book that I also want to talk about. It's a little bit of a shift. Um, okay. Because so, you know, not everyone is going to, when they meet new people, not everyone's going to agree with everything that those new people think or believe mm -hmm. or see say or whatnot. Not everyone's yeah. going to agree with everything they read in your book or that we say in the right. book. So there's, that's always going to happen. And at Women of Welcome, we talk a lot about kind of leaning into that stretch and being willing yeah. to hear a different perspective and, you know, consider mm -hmm. different experiences. Um, I'm actually going to read to you a, port, a little small little part of your book, <laughs> especially for the Women of Welcome community. This is going to resonate so deeply because often we're in positions of bridging um, many of the women in our community don't necessarily live in proximity to immigrants or refugees, but they're yeah, exploring sure. these concepts. And so the people they do live in proximity from, they're sort of bridging some of that and trying yeah. to face tensions. I love that. Yep. So in this chapter, it says the temperature on civil discourse keeps inching up degree by degree, but we don't exactly feel the heat. We just know it's basically always hot in here. Simple disagreements feel calamitous, so we avoid them, or we try to shut them down by verbal force. Maybe we're afraid to enter in because we're worried we don't have the right words or command the right data. This is huge. Mm -hmm. Many of us actively avoid conflict because it makes us anxious, an emotion that's uncomfortable and even terrifying. And when the shadow of conflict hovers like dense fog, it's easy to see why we peel away from those who aren't on our team. All the while, mm -hmm. we're missing out. We forget how to disagree what, well, how to learn from each other. We're forgetting we're all just human. Yeah. Man, I just read that. I mean, you could, my book is like all underlined and starred and I've scribbled <laughs> notes in the side because I think this is something so many of us are familiar with right now. So yeah. talk a little bit about kind of the importance of listening as it comes to being a neighbor, whether that's yeah. across cultures, people that are just yeah. like all the different ways we're yeah. Explore that. Yeah, I'd love to. You know, when when I moved into so much of 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 the ways I've started to kind of understand this happened when I moved here. So I the the goal by no means is number one move. <laughs> like that's not <laughs> that's not what we're it's saying here. Story. No, for most people, like that's what I want this book to do is like right where you are right now. It's significant to know and to believe that you are there. And the people around you are in the same place. And that matters in some way, you know, like wherever it is today. Um, but when I, when I arrived in this, in this particular phase of my life, I realized pretty quickly, like I mentioned before, like suddenly there was a lot of difference around me, different opinions, different views, different beliefs, different faith expressions, you know, in, in, every, in every possibility, it was different. And I, I started to realize because I had never... I had never encountered this really before. I started to realize that I had this impulse in me to keep distance from difference. Um, almost like a knee jerk reaction that I didn't really even know I felt. I think it's just that kind of discomfort factor. Mm -hmm. You know, we seek, we tend to seek what is familiar and what's familiar is comfortable. And so I, I started to, to recognize this thing within me. And then I started to understand that I was allowed to just be curious. You know, that there was no harm and no danger in coming near people who were different than me in some ways. And I have to do this because at the end of the day, what we always learn is we're, we're all pretty similar. You know, we're all kind of the same if we can get past these like, you know, how we look on paper or whatever. Um, but I just remember early conversations where, you know, I would be sitting talking to someone for the first time or really kind of getting to know someone and realizing like, oh, we really see this differently and that's okay. Like I had to almost tell myself like, it's okay. It's fine. You're not in trouble. You don't have to run. You don't have to leave. You know, it, and, and maybe that sounds weird to some people. I have a feeling it resonates with a lot of people um, to allow myself to just say, I just want to get to know the people around me. And that's going to require some basic curiosity and not to counterpoint or not to change somebody's mind or bring them onto my team, whatever team that might be, but to just start to really listen, to talk less, 
and listen more, it was a game changer for me. And, and, and it really just, it, it truly does make life more interesting. Um, it, I started to, to just, it doesn't mean that we're going to even change our minds on everything. We might in some ways as we start to see the world from a different pair of eyes kind of. Um, but it just means that it kind of, it, it sort of like, I don't know how to explain it other than like it, it kind of illuminates things that maybe we had never thought about. Or, um, you know, even if we always disagree on this fundamental thing, we can come to a place of, of understanding like, I don't really see it that way. But now I kind of understand why you do. Mm. And, and it's okay yeah. to exist together in that place. It's, it's really okay. And it's ultimately really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, so needed in our culture in this moment. Because I do think yeah. that, that concept of like the temperature just keeps rising and we just all feel that yeah. it's like, I don't even want to step into that. And in the in conversations around immigration, which I don't know if you've heard, sometimes they're controversial. <laughs> these days. I, Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> and, right. And so <clears throat> it can feel like you have to, I think that data, piece, like I need to know the data. I need to know yeah. every single thing about the policies, the everyone, you know, and it's, and so it can be like, I'll just not enter in. And totally, so, totally. You know, I mean, yeah. That, that's, that's one of the things I appreciate just about this community and the work you're doing is that I often feel that way. Like, it, you know, there, there is so much happening in the world and so many issues that are so specific and nuanced and, and, and it's so easy to feel like, well, I'm not an, I'm not an expert on immigration or I don't know the right answers. I'm not like, that's not my job. My job is not to know how to fix things necessarily, but that, but it also doesn't mean that I can't engage in conversations. And it also doesn't mean that we can't, even as we're learning and listening together and allowing ourselves to be curious, the thing I come back to, particularly with this issue um, and, and with other issues is we can we can have these conversations and and decide that that what i'm what i'm going to bring to the table might not be like policy details or data or a bunch of numbers and facts and i know everything and i've got you know i've got it all down pat what i can bring to the conversation is like can we just be kind can we just like like focus on our our shared dignity can we just remember constantly that we are all made in the image of God and, and that we are all neighbors? And, you know, so, so, yeah, other people can bring those other pieces to the conversation, but I can be a part of the conversation, too. I have something to bring to these conversations. I think there's, there's a fine line there. And, and again, this is one of the things I appreciate about what you're doing. I think it's good to be taking up our own education because there's so much that I didn't learn or didn't quite learn correctly. I want to be a learner. You know, I want to be learning what I can, but I don't want that, you know, we're, we're on this path to learn and to grow. I don't want that to be in itself a barrier that's like, well, I'm not an expert yet. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm just going to stay quiet on this. Um, there are ways to have those conversations rooted in, in, in kindness with each other that really can it brings us together and it like kind of expands our empathy. And, and when we can come to a place where we're, we're really sharing in empathy and learning empathy together, that's just a good place to be. Oh, so good. And I think it really does. It dovetails with this idea of we also bring our relationships into the equation. And as we get to know the people mm -hmm. living on the block, living, yeah. you know, attending our kids school, all these kinds of things, you know, many people are surprised to discover that there are immigrants and refugees in their very own community. Yes. Because yeah, that, that's one of the things I think I wrote about this in the, in Start With Hello. It was a pivotal moment for me in learning. I knew that, that there were immigrants around me. I didn't know, I didn't know specifically like the stories of some of the people who I'd gotten to know. 
Um, I didn't, I didn't realize some of the details of their immigrant journey or their status or so, so when things like this started to come out and then it was like, Oh wait, I know him. I love him. I'm friends with him. I didn't know this part of his story. It was a really important moment for me to, again, to be curious, to listen, to set aside assumptions maybe. And it, it, yeah, I mean, when things become more personal, Absolutely. when we know faces and names, it just changes the, the positioning of our heart. It changes the, the conversation. It changes us. And, and that's what, that's what I found over and over again. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I'm going to, I'm going to let us wrap up there of how much these relationships, when we reach out in our community can change us and, and really yeah. have an impact on our heart. And so thank you guys for watching. If you have yeah. not yet ordered Shannon's book, it just came out this week. Start with hello. Mm -hmm by Shannon Martin. I see your name there backwards if you're skilled. In <laughs> we'll have it in the comments. Um, and I will also offer too, related to this conversation, Women of Welcome released a, re a free resource this fall called Using Your Voice, which mm -hmm. dives a little deeper into some of how to have these conversations in, yeah. around the people that you know, of how to, once you're connected, once you feel like this is something that's important, how do, how do I have those conversations with dignity and kindness. That's good. Get that at the link in our bio. You can get Shannon's book anywhere that you buy books and I highly recommend it. Um, Shannon, thank you so much for your time today. It's always Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for everybody who joined. I loved it. All right. Have a great day. Yeah, you too.